Hey, here's a walkthrough from start to finish on our review sheet today and uh, prepped for a quiz or test tomorrow. So um, as mentioned before, you get these formulas on the geometry exam describing on how to turn degrees into another way to measure angles called radians. Without too much explanation on what a radian is, we're going to use those formulas to turn the number of degrees into radians. The formula says that for each degree it's worth pi over 180 radians. So you could read that as every degree gives you this many radians. We don't have one degree, we've got 20 of them, so that means we've got 20 of these. So what does 20 of those actually look like? To find out, you just multiply by pi over 180 degrees. Typically, when you work with radians, you end up getting pi's in the answer. And that is the correct answer, but, you, I, but again, you could reduce that too. 20 divided by 180 is the same as 1 over 9. So the answer is 1 over 9 times pi or what would show up as a multiple choice answer, the answer is pi over 9 radians. I know there's not much of an explanation about what radians are, but for our purposes on the geometry exam, they just want to get you comfortable with making the conversion from one to the other. So 150 degrees turned into radians means you have 150 of these. So 150 of those looks like 150 times pi over 180, which is 150 pi over 180, and that's the answer. But reducing it is a good idea. So you can divide both the top and bottom um, by 10 to make it 15 over 18, and then divide each of those by 3 to make it 5 over 6. To reduce a fraction on the calculator, remember there is a trick. If you type in the fraction and type math, and then press the enter button two times in a row, it will reduce a fraction for you. And that can be helpful when you're doing these conversions. And the review today also mentions that you can convert it from radians back into degrees. So if they're giving you something that's already in radians, like in question number two, all you would have to do is multiply by 180 divided by pi. Mm -hmm. yeah, degree measures don't usually have pi's in them, and that's the purpose of that pi being underneath, is it cancels with the pi that's there. So 180 divided by 4 is the answer which is worth 45 degrees. And then the last one right here, if you're given 2 pi radians and you want to write it as degrees, you need a way to knock out that pi and the conversion they gave you does that. You get the pi's canceling and 2 times 180 degrees is 360 degrees. Okay, moving on through the review sheet find the arc length and the area of the sector. This reviews both ideas from this week. To find the arc length, first of all, you have to decide how many degrees you actually have in your sector. And it's given to you that there's 60 degrees out of the 360 degrees that are totally available. So that's the fraction of the circle that we're interested in using. And all that's left to do is to multiply that by either the area or the circumference. If we're after the arc length, we want to know how long it is on the circle. We only want the part in white that's part of the entire length around the circle. So the yellow part of that circle, if we use the circumference formula, we get circumference equals pi times d and if it's 9 for the radius it's 18 
for the diameter. So the answer would be pi times 18 times the 60 divided by 360. Said to write the answer in terms of pi. So if you did some work with a the calculator there or even without the calculator, you could figure out that the answer comes out to be worth 3 pi. The answer makes sense because the circumference is 18 pi, so all the way around the circle is worth 18 pi. We don't want all the way around the circle. We just want just this white arc right here. So all the way around a round trip is worth 18 pi's. We just want this white part, and it does make sense that it would be worth only 3 times pi. Not all 18, but just 3. Okay, and that is the arc length. The work for the area is almost identical. It's still 60 over 360, but you're multiplying by the area of the circle. And the area of the circle is pi r squared. So very quickly, that's pi times 9 squared, pi times 81. Which, if you use the calculator for it, it's 13 and a half times pi for the area inside that sector. Again, that makes sense because the entire circle has 81 pi's in it. We don't want the entire circle, we just want this part of it. So it would have to be much smaller than the entire. Question number four. There's a few ways to work this question out. Question number four, um, it says that AB is worth six. They want to know how much the angle is actually worth. And they're telling you that the area of the sector is actually equal to 12 times pi. Now, the area of the circle would be pi r squared. And since the radius is 6, pi times 6 squared would be 36 pi. A quick way to finish this question is to notice that we have part of the entire circle. We've got 12 pi out of the 36 pi, which comes out to be a third of the circle. And a third of 360 degrees is 120 degrees. Now, if you didn't notice that shortcut, you could still work the question out by setting up a proportion. We want x degrees out of the 360. We've got 12 pi out of the 36 pi. You cross multiply here and solve for x, you could also get that x is equal to 120 degrees. Moving along with the rest of the review, um, without getting into a lot of details here for question number five, we've practiced this enough to find the perimeter of the polygon. You'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle, the Pythagorean theorem for this triangle, this one, and this one and then add up all the sides together. I guess as a convenience, it looks like this side here is exactly the same as this side here. So you'd only have to use the Pythagorean theorem once here to get both sides. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 4 by 4, and so is this one. So the Pythagorean theorem once can tell you that Radical 32 is how long it is from C to B, and also from B to E. And then you'd have to do similar work down here with these triangles. This is 2 by 4. And this is 2 by 1, 2, 3, 2 by 4 as well. So you'd have to use Pythagorean theorem once for that. So 
So you get radical 20. So now we know that from C to D, it's worth radical 20. And so is the distance from E to D, radical 20. It does say to write your answer in simplest radical form. So you'd have to add these all together and then put it in simplest radical form. Um, I'm trying to compress the video so we don't go through the entire thing, but um, because of that, I'm going to skip over going over the final answer. So it would be all these pieces added together. Well, I decided to add it in there. So radical 32 comes out to be worth 4 radical 2 plus another 4 radical 2. And radical 20 comes out to be worth 2 radical 5 plus another 2 radical 5. So the overall perimeter would be worth 8 radical 2 plus 4 radical 5. Uh, as far as the area goes, we've practiced that a lot in the last few. That's the surround and subtract method for here, and I've been writing pretty large, so we're running out of real estate there to show you the picture to show you how the questions worked out. So the very first thing to do is box it in if you want to find the area of a weird looking shape like this. And the area of that box there would be 8 times 6. So the overall area of the box, oops. So the box has an area, or the rectangle has an area of 8 times 6, or 48. And then you're going to have to subtract away these um, four triangles. And the area of each of those triangles is figured out by doing half base times height. So on this triangle right here, it's half of 4 times 4, half of 16 is 8. So that triangle is worth 8. And so is its twin sister over here. It's also worth 8. So we have to subtract that away. And also, this is a 2 by 4, half of 4 times 2 be half of 8 which is worth 4 and then the final triangle over here is also worth an area of 4 so it's the box take away all four triangles so 48 take away 8 is 40 take away another 8 is 32 take away another 4 is 28 take away another 4 is 24 so that would be the area of the quadrilateral that was given in the question. Uh, to find the let's see perimeter of this octagon, it says it's a regular octagon, which means it has eight sides, and all eight sides are equal. It has eight congruent sides. So if we find out how long one of the sides are, multiply it by 8, we would have the perimeter. So to find out how long it is on, for one of the sides, you need to find out how, how long it is from there to there. You could make a quick sketch of a coordinate axis. And negative 3, positive 5 is where point B is. And point A is at 4 positive 2. So we're trying to find out how long it is from there to there. And you could do that by thinking about or drawing a triangle like this. So the y values are changing by 3 and the x values are changing by 7. So you'd use 3 squared plus 7 squared to find out how long it is. So you get 49 plus 9. And um, you're dealing with radical 58 as how long it is from A to B. Now radical 58, radical 58 is a 
radical that cannot be simplified because 58 cannot be broken down into any pairs of, of factors that are the same. So the grand finale of this question is to say that you've got 8 radical 58s because it says it's an octagon with 8 sides. We're moving right along with some more review here. It says the archway below is to be painted. What is the area of the archway to the nearest tenth? All right, well, to come up with a little bit of a plan here, if I found the area of the rectangle and took away this part right here, I would have the area of the space left behind. So I'll have to do some clever math here to figure some things out. Well, one thing that's easy to do is to figure out the area of this rectangle. It'd be length times width or base times height. So the, the rectangle is worth, as far as the area, is worth 5.7 times 1.5. So 8.55. Now the trick is to find a way to figure out the area of the shaded spot right here. And to figure that out, I'm going to start by figuring out the area of the entire sector here. If it's 90 degrees on the arc, it means it's 90 degrees as the central angle. And the area of that sector is worth 90 out of 360 or a quarter times the area of a full circle that would go all the way around which would be pi times 16. So it's altogether worth 4 times pi. Now the plan is to figure out what this is and subtract that away from the rectangle um, to find the area of the polka dotted region I'm going to find the area of just this triangle right here and subtract it away from the sector so the area of the triangle would be half base times height so it'd be half of 4 times 4, which would be 8. And then to find the area of the polka dotted region, it would be the yellow take away the blue. So it would be 4 pi take away the 8. Going back to the beginning to find the area of the arc, or the archway, it's the rectangle take away the polka dotted section. So all, all that would be needed left to do is to type this into the calculator. And this question is pretty involved. So. so, you know, I definitely would say this is a pretty altogether a pretty challenging question from start to finish but it's good to see and face your toughest competition sometimes so the area would be worth four square feet okay on to two questions that might be more important question eight and nine uh, we'll just breeze through this I mean actually we did see question eight earlier on a review sheet or a homework assignment It'd be 100 over 360 times 49 times pi for the area. It says in terms of pi, so we're just going to be doing um, that on the calculator without typing the pi in. And you end up getting something that's not exactly a pretty answer. You get 13.61 repeating with a pi next to it. Next question says to find the area to the nearest square millimeter. All right, well, uh, I guess I meant to put centimeter there. 
just to make the calculations a bit easier at this time. So um, as far as figuring out the area to the nearest square centimeter, it's just typing this into the calculator, 13.61 repeating times pi, and then rounding, correct, rounding correctly, so it's 42 point, well, nearest square would be 43 square centimeters. To find the length to the nearest centimeter, again, we're talking about doing the same exact work, except instead of multiplying by the area, multiplying by the circumference. In this case, it does say to not leave it in terms of pi, so you're going to type the entire, th the entire thing into the calculator just as you wrote it, which comes out to be 12.2, which would come out to be 12. Okay, last part, convert the central angle into radians and determine the length of BC to the nearest centimeter. All right, well, that's a little bit beyond where I wanted to take you, but um, I think we've got enough practice in with the radians at this time since I'm kind of slingshotting you through it. The last question, question number nine, determine the height of the flag below to the nearest foot. I'm giving all the information that's here. We're looking for how long it is from there to there. Uh, this is taking us back to working with right triangles. And if you spend some time thinking about this, that's great. If you haven't thought about it enough, why don't you pause the video and give it some thought on how you're going to figure out how far it is from the top of the flagpole to the bottom of the flagpole. All right, well... You may realize that to figure that out, we're going to have to begin by figuring out how long it is here in blue. And I'll call that X as well, but I'll call it blue X. If we know how long it is in blue and subtract away how long it is in white, we'd be able to figure out how long it is in yellow. So you could use different letters for this. I'm just going to use different colors. And I'm going to start by looking at the... the large triangle. So looking at the largest triangle right here, I'm going to use Sokotoa on that. So the blue, to find the blue. So the blue here would be worth, we don't know yet, but it's the opposite side of the picture. And that's the side we're looking for. The side we're given is the adjacent side. So you're going to use Soka or Toa in this case, you're going to be using TOA because we're interested in the opposite side and they're giving us the adjacent. So it would be the tangent of 32 degrees equals the opposite side over the adjacent. By cross multiplying and making sure your calculator is set to degrees, you get 300 times the tangent of 32. And you're getting approximately for the blue X that it's worth 187.46081. And you can see that I extended the answer out. I did not round the answer to the nearest tenth because I'm not going to round until the very end, and I want to keep as much decimals uh, going as I can. Uh, to figure out the side in white is the next part. It's exactly the same work because X is the opposite side as well but with a different angle. The angle is 30 degrees for that, so it would be the tangent of 32 equals x over 300. Uh, whoops, meant to say 30. So cross multiplying there, just like the time before, gives us that the white x is approximately 173.20508. And then finally, to find out what x is worth, x would be worth the same amount as the blue. Take away the white.
which comes out to be about 14.3 with some good rounding there at the end. 14.3 feet tall.